how do we bring these things together? Why do we have different silos of service? Why do we have customer support and customer success and customer training all as distinct services? We kind of think about it like, why wouldn't you put all of the services that your customers need throughout the life cycle together as one super service? Why is it three separate services? And so we, we spent more time on it and said, we've got to bring this together. Why can't this be one service? Why can't this be our new definition of customer success? And if you think about it, one of the things that perpetuates these silos is the fact that all of the vendors that serve the silos are designed for the silo. So let's think about enterprise software, right? There's different software products that serve customer support versus customer success versus training. In fact, all you have to do is go right next door to the Interact Zone and you'll see all those vendors in there perpetuating the silos. And oh, by the way, our friends here at TSIA that welcomed me to this stage today, they're guilty of it too. I was walking down to the keynote just a little while ago and they had balloons that were pillars representing all of the service disciplines that they sell to all of us and we all subscribe to. So they're perpetuating the problem too. Now in fairness, and I've got to give a nod to my friends Thomas and JB, as usual, they were kind of ahead of this trend. They've had conferences in the past on convergence. In fact, I think the fall conference looks like it's gonna be on convergence too. And they actually wrote a research paper in 2020, June of 2020, on the case for services convergence, the big C customer success, which is exactly this. So once again, they got us. They were ahead of all of us in bringing these things together. So we really think it's important to not think about this as three services, but one. Convergence is the key. We're in the process of bringing all these together to make it easier for all of our customers to buy these services, to consume the services and for our delivery teams to deliver them. So that's really important. <clears throat> so the next piece of this journey for us was, well, how are we gonna do the delivery? It's one thing to bring together the offerings and the experiences, but how are we gonna go do delivery? And so when it comes to delivery, we always think about industrialization, which is kind of a fancy word we throw around here a lot. And many of you in this room have industrialized those three pillars that we've talked about. You can certainly have industrialization um, in each of those. But I want to go a little bit deeper on the concept of industrialization. And I always draw inspiration from history, and I'm kind of a process person. I'm an industrial engineer by training. And so when I go back in history and think about the great examples of industrialization, the first one that comes to mind is Henry Ford. Not for the Model T itself, but for the moving assembly line, which changed manufacturing around the world forever. But actually a better example of industrialization, one that I'm maybe more inspired by today, is the fast food hamburger. I'll bet you didn't think I was gonna say that. So the fast food hamburger is interesting. <clears throat> it was first developed by White Castle in the 1930s. Hopefully there's some other mid Midwestern White Castle fans out there. <clears throat> Only maybe one, I think I heard. Oh, there's maybe two White Castle fans out there. So this was in the 1930s, but it really wasn't until the 50s when McDonald's really industrialized the fast food hamburger. In fact, there's a great movie called The Founder. Some of you may have seen it. Um, it stars Michael Keaton playing Ray Kroc, who actually, just for, for everyone to be aware, is not the founder of McDonald's. He was the buyer of McDonald's and the owner of McDonald's. But the McDonald's company and the concept of industrializing um, hamburgers was really developed by the McDonald's brothers. And so there's this scene in the movie where Michael Keaton visits the first McDonald's location in San Bernardino, California in 1954. And he's getting a tour of the kitchen and he is just blown away. And there's all kinds of people in there and things moving around. And he gets to this point where there's a device that dispenses the perfect amount of ketchup on every hamburger, the perfect amount. And you may wonder, why am I talking about ketchup at this point? I'll get to it in a second. So he turns to the McDonald's brothers and he asks, where on earth did you get this amazing device to dispense the precise amount of ketchup? And they looked at him and they said, that's easy, we built it ourselves. So here's the thing on the, on the ketchup, <clears throat> tying it back to industrializing services. There's two things that you really wanna make sure you're doing when it comes to industrializing services. You wanna be precise about the experience and you wanna be precise about your costs. That's really the key. And this example of the ketchup dispenser does both of those things. Let me explain. So think about a hamburger or any sandwich if you don't like hamburgers. If you put 
too little ketchup on that sandwich, that degrades the experience because it doesn't taste right. At the same time, if you put too much ketchup on the sandwich, it also degrades the experience. It has a different taste. And we've all seen this one. The ketchup can kind of squirt out on the side of the, of the bun and then get all of your clothes, and that's not a great experience either. So controlling the amount of ketchup is really important to controlling the experience. Now, there's also a cost component here. No one's CFO is going to complain if we dispense too little ketchup on all the hamburgers. But, and this is a big but, if you routinely put too much ketchup on every hamburger, you're going to have a ketchup budget variance, and your CFO is not going to be very happy. <clears throat> So here's the key. You really want to think about industrialization in this experience. And I can hear people in the back already saying, well, Jim, you know, we don't serve billions of hamburgers, and we aren't Salesforce. We aren't a $30 billion company. Why does industrialization matter to us? OK, let's take a much smaller company. Let's say you're a startup SaaS company. You have one customer success manager. Do you want that customer success manager, when they're onboarding your customers, to follow a script, very detailed, go through a process, and constantly improve that process and script with every customer they onboard? Or, this is the other option, do you just want them to kind of wing it with every customer? Of course you want them to follow a process and improve it and make it better for every customer. That's controlling the experience and the cost, even at smaller scale. So when we bring these services together to converge, we want to make sure we're industrializing them. Said differently, while the hood is up, on this convergence of these three service lines, let's make sure we industrialize them. Now, I'll give you an example from our uh, world that we're going through right now. So again, the three service lines we're converging are customer support, customer success, and customer training. It just so happens that our customer support team has a website at help.salesforce.com. We also have our customer success team has a website called Success Center. So, Back to the, con the experience and convergence, it doesn't make any sense for our customers to know, to have two websites, much less to know where to go. Maybe a more important point, you don't want to confuse Google. Never confuse Google, because a huge percentage of our traffic to these sites comes from Google, and when you have split experiences, you're also confusing the experience for Google, and they don't know where to point people when people search. So we have these two websites, and so in the spirit of the industrialization, we're now converging them to have one website. And when we have one website, two really good things happen. The experience is easier for customers and for our friends at Google. But we also get cost benefits because instead of having two teams building two websites, I can just have one team building one website. That's really the spirit of industrialization. <clears throat>